Planning Board meeting, followed by the Town Planner's Report. And we'll be looking at 10 Clinton Road Private Access Way Permit in the Subdivision Ordinance Overhaul, followed by public comment on items not on tonight's agenda, followed by the adjournment. So let's start with the first item was the approval of minutes. Anyone have any comments, any questions, errors, omissions? Carol Ann? I have a comment on the last sentence before new business. It says, uh, is hopeful that these changes will be effective in promoting and approving. I think that means it should be improving, oh, improving. communications. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Any corrections? Comments? Would anyone like to make a motion? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Motion Sorry. by Eliza, second by Joe. Okay. Any discussion on the minutes? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? All those opposed? And we're unanimous. 6 0. Okay. Next is the town plans report. Maureen. Okay. Uh, just a few things that are going on. Uh, I think the board received uh, a forwarding email that I sent to you. The town council at last month's meeting has forwarded a, a lot of recommendations from the FOSS committee uh, to the planning board, to the conservation commission, to the ordinance committee. So all of that stuff is starting to um, percolate. Um, that what? Okay. There is uh, also the council will be creating a town center committee, and that committee is really taking a look at a 20 year old <coughs> plan that was first done in 1993. And they have asked the planning, it's a nine member committee, and they have asked the planning board to designate a representative to uh, that committee. So you don't have to do that tonight, but you do need to do it fairly soon. They're also soliciting uh, five members of the public, so anyone who can hear this who is interested in serving on that committee, um, you can go on the town website and submit an application, or you can call the town clerk, and she will take you through the process for that application. The council is also creating a library committee. Um, that's a follow-up to the, the bond vote last fall. Um, that committee is uh, mostly councilors, but Part of the charge of the library committee and the town center committee is to collaborate. So that is something else that there'll be some cross crossover on. Uh, the conservation commission is currently working on an update of the 2001 Greenbelt plan. Um, and I think most people know that the budget process is underway. So all departments have submitted their budgets and the manager is now collating and comprehensively assembling and then he will soon be submitting it to the council and they usually hold their uh, review workshops in March and if you need more information on that that's also posted on the town website and then just the last thing uh, I think everyone is well I don't know if everyone was aware but there are boat racks at Great Pond that the town <coughs> issues permits for seasonally every year uh, we are now accepting applications through March 22nd we then issue the slots by a lottery. I should let you know that there are 32 slots and we currently have 35 applications. Okay, thank you. Next item on the agenda is the 10 Clinton Road private access permit. Winslow Pillsbury is requesting a private access permit to create a buildable lot located at 10 Clinton Road under section 19-7-9 private access way permit. The application will be addressed in the following format. There will be an introduction of the item by the town planner, followed by a presentation by the applicant. The public is then welcome to ask questions and comment on the completeness of this application, and then the board will determine the, if the application is complete. So at this time, Maureen, will you provide us with a, an overview? Sure. Um, there's a lot at the end of uh, Clinton Road that's owned by Winslow Pillsbury. Uh, it's a 4.2 acre lot. Uh, it's located in the RC district. The RC district has a minimum lot size of 20,000 square feet. So at four uh, and a quarter acres, there is uh, potentially a lot of room for development on the lot. There is a pond in the middle of the lot. And now the information we have so far indicates that that pond is not triggering any kind of special review. It is in, uh, because it's less than an acre, it would be categorized as an RP 
two type wetland, which means that if you are not going into it, then no other review by the board is needed. There's no uh, specific buffer requirement. And my understanding is the applicant is not proposing to make any changes to the pond. Um, but the whole lot, even though it's four acres, does not have uh, a lot of frontage on Clinton Road. So in order to divide the lot, um, you end up with at least one lot that does not have the minimum frontage of 100 feet. You need that frontage in order to make the lot buildable. But under the town's ordinance, you can create a lot that doesn't have the minimum amount of frontage if you can get something called a private access way permit from the planning board. You can only get one private access way permit for per lot. If you want to create more than one lot, you would need to bump that up to a private road review, and the private road standards reside in the subdivision ordinance. So before you tonight is the application for one more lot for a private access way permit. Thank you. Okay, the applicant can make a presentation, and um, because this is on the public record, if you could just please give us your name. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Madam Chairman, members of the board, I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions, here this evening representing Wynn Pillsbury, who is also with us um, this evening. And uh, joining me this evening is our project engineer, um, who can answer any technical questions that you might have as far as the engineering design of the actual private access way. What I'd like to do, if it's convenient for you, is uh, to have you actually turn around a little bit and orient yourself as far as the, the plan on the wall. Um, I me. also have a plan. Could you turn your microphone up a little bit? It's not picking your voice up. Please. Sure. Is that better? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so essentially what we're looking at is a lot that comes off of Clinton Road. Uh, it comes around this way, up to this point, around here, and then back down, as you see here. As Maureen had mentioned uh, just a few moments ago, the frontage that's actually on Clinton Road extends from this lot line over to this lot line. It's uh, just in excess of 130 feet, linear feet, so this is why we are looking at the private access way. Uh, the lot that will be retained by Winslow Pillsbury will have 100 feet of frontage, and the lot split line, or the proposed lot division line, essentially comes as it was, as we showed it to you when we were here last month, uh, looking at the, uh, this project relative to the initial sketch plan. Uh, nothing or very little has changed since that point as far as any design is concerned. What we're focusing on is the private access way, which is this section right in here. Uh, that's the only thing that is really, be, other than the lot split itself, that's the only thing that we're looking at in terms of lot improvement, uh, different one that's already there. You will notice, and I had the pleasure of meeting, uh, I think all of you at the meeting last month, and then most of you at the, the planning board, or the site walk rather, uh, and uh, we were from Clinton Street, we walked on up in this area and then took a look right up in here. So what we're looking at here is an existing driveway that already comes up to this point right through here and then actually comes up to this garage. You can see that existing driveway that's already listed here in grayscale. Uh, that uh, accesses the single lot that's on the property, the single house rather, that's on the property right now. And then this is the garage that um, is associated with that lot. That garage will end up being uh, part of the other half of the lot, uh, which is what we're splitting off at the moment. So again, as far as orientation is concerned, the pond that you see here is in the middle of the property. We've had the DEP uh, out of the property to take a look at this. We've had a Albert Frick Associates, who's a soil scientist, uh, review that for us and for the DEP. We do have letters back from uh, Mike Mullen at the DEP uh, stating that this is not a jurisdictional uh, wetland as far as the DEP is concerned, or rather it is considered a wetland um, and not specifically a pond. The pond itself is 17,100 and change square feet. Um, so, as Maureen had mentioned, it is an RP2 wetland. There is no setback designated there from, as far as the regulation is concerned, but we are proposing a 10-foot restricted setback from that. That's what you see here, right around the pond. Um, otherwise, you see the, uh, the building envelope setbacks that are around the, lot, the rest of the lot in this particular area. Uh, that, as you're probably aware, is the area within which construction can actually take place if they want to do it that way. Uh, and again, the existing house here, and then there'll be another house, generally speaking, in this area right in here. Uh, as far as uh, access is concerned, both properties are going to have cross easements that will allow access coming up this particular road. One will be able to come over to the what we'll call the new lot, and uh, one will be for the existing lot. Both parties will end up using that same access way, hence the reason for the easements. Uh, those easements will be not only for ingress and egress for for access, but will also be for the utilities that are coming up from the public utilities that are coming up from Clinton Street, Clinton Road. 
those utilities are obviously sewer and water and then the uh, subgrade electric. Uh, there's a pole, there's a utility pole right here um, and that uh, those lines already come up to this particular structure and in conjunction with the construction of the road, those utilities will come up in this way as well. Uh, as far as the remaining portion of the lot is concerned, you will note from the time that we were out there at the site walk that uh, most of the entirety of the lot, with the little bit of exception of this section right in here, is already uh, wooded. Um, if I may call your attention briefly to this plan that I have in my hand, um, you'll again, those of you who are on the site walk, winter notwithstanding, um, you'll note that uh, the summertime photograph shows the existing pond, uh, the house that's out there right now, the garage that's out there, and then the rest of this property is wooded except for this section that's right over in here. Uh, some of you had comments about some of the trees that were in that area. Fortunately, the private access way is actually taking the place of the existing driveway. So there's very little in terms of additional impervious surface uh, that is actually going to be uh, constructed in conjunction with this project. We're literally recreating the driveway to make it to the private access way standards as far as its width is concerned. Uh, you'll note that when we were out there on the site walk, this is a fairly steep area from the road or just past uh, Clinton Street or Clinton Road up to about this point. Uh, we're actually making that uh, considerably better, that grade considerably better than it is now. So everything from uh, drainage, which tends to uh, come from in this particular area down this way, uh, and then up in this section, it all flows uh, right into that pond area. Uh, we're making all that essentially better than it is right now. Uh, which means that the, uh, the drainage that's in this particular area will continue to come down as it does now uh, to, count, to collect right down in this area, go through an existing culvert that comes down into a larger wet band of wetland that's down in this section. Actually, it's over in this whole section over here. Uh, the property has been uh, delineated for wetlands, and the only wetland that's actually on the property is the pond itself. And as Maureen stated, we don't have any intention of actually uh, doing any type of work uh, immediately uh, within that pond area. So nobody's going to be filling the pond or anything toward that end. Uh, and as far as the DEP is concerned, again, that's not a, uh, a jurisdictional wetland that they have, um, they require any setbacks from. So we're all set as far as that's concerned. Uh, the normal setbacks that you see as far as the house is concerned, well, the new house on the new lot uh, will be, again, generally speaking, in this area, could be anywhere in this area. I believe at this point it's designated for right down here, but that lot has not yet been sold. Um, this is obviously a, um, a pertinent to the approvals that we get from the board. That's the general background uh, of the site itself. Uh, I'd like to uh, further address some of the, uh, the comments that um, uh, we've gotten from the reviewing engineer and from the planner. Uh, there were a couple of questions, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of questions about the, uh, the turning radius um, in, this, in this particular area right in here. Uh, the fire chief has been out to the site um, several times, actually, and he has indicated that uh, in the memo that I believe you got, um, it says that uh, he doesn't have a problem with the grade. It's a steeper grade than if we were creating a full subdivision, for instance, that would typically be allowed. But given that the driveway is already there, uh, he has indicated that his, uh, the vehicles, the emergency vehicles, would be able to get up that grade relatively simply. Um, one of the, the issues that we did have that we have subsequently addressed is uh, right down where, okay, I've lost battery power in my, uh, in my pointer, but right where the road leaves uh, Clinton Street or Clinton Road, or right where our private access way leaves, leaves that, um, it's a relatively steep immediate grade. We, we flattened that out a bit. Uh, the fire chief's concern was uh, given one of their vehicles or their largest vehicle actually, that uh, if they have to be able to or when they have to be able to negotiate that turn, he was concerned about the uh, the overhang in the back of the vehicle actually scraping on the pavement. So what we've done is we actually went with the fire chief to the fire station and measured the longest vehicle that they've got. And uh, we've created a template that's part of your uh, packet that shows the, uh, that this road has been regraded, the private access way has been regraded to the extent that will accommodate that vehicle without it actually uh, scraping on the ground. Uh, the fire chief did indicate that uh, they'd like to be able to have that tested after construction, which is absolutely fine. Uh, if for whatever reason it didn't work to his satisfaction, then the house might have, the new house would have to be sprinklered, uh, which is also, that's, if that's what the chief wants, then certainly we're gonna, uh, we're gonna take care of that. Uh, as far as any other uh, um, comments here, 
Uh, we're looking at public water and sewer that will come from Clinton Street. Uh, the um, drainage courses are from the pond down toward Clinton Street, so the lower half of the lot drains down, down in that direction. And again, we're not changing that dynamic at all. Anything that's immediately north of the pond, actually west, east, and north of the pond, drains to the pond itself. Uh, that pond, for those of you who had the chance to be there with us, that is what we basically refer to as a kettle, which means that it is a collector, which means that there is no stream or any inflow into that pond. It is simply rainwater. Uh, in the event of a very significant storm event, there may be enough water that would go into that pond that would create a necessity for an outfall, which is why that outfall was created. This is the one in the, uh, uh, the southeast quadrant there, the lower right corner of the pond. Uh, that outlet actually, there's no actual defined channel in that area. It is an outlet that uh, tends to come from the pond and then basically spreads out uh, sheet flowing down into the wetlands that are in that uh, lower right hand section off of the property. Uh, and then the, uh, they spread out considerably into the greater wetland area that's uh, below Clinton Road. The, uh, the utilities that we have are those that are already uh, there. And uh, we do have uh, deed restrictions uh, that we're proposing that will eliminate any possibility of further development of this parcel after this split is done. So in lieu of actually uh, showing a scenario that would, as Maureen had stated earlier, uh, be conducive to multiple lots around this area, uh, we're proposing that this lot split be the only lot split and it will be deed restricted and that comment is already on the plan toward that end as well. And then there is a maintenance agreement for uh, the um, cross properties for both individuals or both families or whoever would own both lots uh, to be able to mutually care for the lot or the uh, private access way as you see it. Toward that end, I would like to be able to answer any questions that you might have, uh, address any comments, and we'll go from there. Thank you. One of the comments was regarding the uh, 12 and a half foot wide turnaround at the top that Chief Gleason wanted that wider. Yes, um, he had suggested that uh, while 12 and a half feet works in terms of the actual turning radius, uh, and we've shown that on the template for the vehicle that he plans to be of the, the largest vehicle that he would have up there. Uh, it was nevertheless something that he wished he could have a little bit, a uh, little bit of leeway, as it were. So we've increased that to the size of the private access, the overall size of the private access way, which is 18 feet. That will now allow a, uh, a better freedom of movement as far as backing for the or facing in for the uh, fire truck, and uh, the st uh, stabilizers that are on either side of the truck would also be able to uh, fit well within that 18 feet. Could you clarify again the, uh, how you respond to the concern of the chief with respect to the angle of the parking lot and the front row and the front row? Excuse me, Peter, could you say that again? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, if you could respond to the chief's comment about the uh, angle of departure from Clinton Road into the uh, private access road, he felt the angle was insufficient. Yes. Um, did everybody hear the question? Uh, essentially what the chief was concerned about, and, and this was based, as I understand it, on a uh, history of about 10 or a dozen years or so ago when there was a, uh, uh, an activity at the site that required a fire engine to be able to get out there. Uh, and uh, apparently when he did that, or when fire department did that, the back of the vehicle actually did scrape a bit on the, uh, the pavement of Clinton Road. Uh, Clinton Road, as those of us who were there, you understand, is relatively flat. And, uh, and then we have this substantial grade that goes up from there. So what happened is you're going from a very flat surface immediately up into a steeper grade. You can imagine when you've got a uh, vehicle where the, uh, the area of the vehicle that's behind the rear axles is fairly extensive, which a school bus would be or a fire engine would be or something of that magnitude. When you start negotiating this upward curve, the back of that vehicle, the extended back of that vehicle, doesn't tend to negotiate that curve until the back axles are actually into that curve. So it kind of forces the back down a little bit. Um, and, uh, and that's causing the scraping. So what he was concerned about is making that better to the point when the fire engine, if it ever needs to get up there again, uh, will come down the road, will negotiate that turn, and will then be able to head up into an angle on the proposed angle of the access way that will keep that fire engine essentially level, uh, notwithstanding it's going up the hill, but won't cause that bow 
so that uh, there's not going to be any scraping of the back fender area uh, on the actual pavement. Does that answer your How question? have you ascertained that you've solved the chief's problem? Uh, that's an engineering question. And what we did was uh, when we measured that vehicle, uh, we literally took the, uh, the distances from grade, where the tires are, up to the lowest portion of the actual vehicle itself in that particular area. And then also the overall length of the vehicle. And the templates, by the way, are a part of your packet. Uh, and then we calculated how that is actually going to, the fire engine would actually uh, hit that, uh, that angle to start with and what the lowest or the rear portion of that fire engine would be as the front axle starts going up the hill, where is that forced lower fender going to be? And we've literally designed the road or engineered the road such that uh, that will be a, uh, a series of cut and fill to make sure that when that road is negotiated, that the fire engine actually does negotiate a, uh, a full curve uh, on that private access way to negate the, prob the potential problem of scraping on the pavement. So then after the road is built, the fire chief would make a determination if it works and decide whether or not he's going to require a sprinkler. Is that That's what he's indicated. Um, by all calculations and those which were actually reviewed by the reviewing engineer as well, there shouldn't be any issues with some room to spare. Um, but certainly that's his purview to be able to request that. Uh, so what we're going to do is request that, uh, and that's fine, whatever the chief wants, we're willing to give to him. Uh, so toward that end, what we would suggest is when this is built, that before the final top coat is, or before a top coat is actually put on it, in other words, when it's still graveled, um, he can do his test. And if for whatever reason his satisfaction is uh, not great, then rather than having to rip up pavement again, we could just uh, go right through the gravel and uh, either make it sprinklered, which would take care of everything, uh, or um, he could have that leveled off further if he wanted to. And then after that, once he agrees, then it would be uh, the top coat would be put on there. There will be a paved driveway up to the, uh, the portion of the top of that hill. I have a, I have a question. The hammer head on the uh, entrance, the near near the pond. See the hammer head yes. area there. Why is it curved round? Why don't you just make it a straight line rather than curving it round? If you made that straight line, the truck. The fire engine wouldn't have to make such a horrendous turn. It's difficult for me to show you here. I don't have one of your pens. <laughs> um, a laser line. But if you right, instead sorry. of making that down, that a hammerhead, if you made that basically from the tip of the hammerhead to the garage, a straight line, it doesn't cut into the uh, into the pond. And the pond, you're not building between that and there. You'd, you'd end up with a much easier turn for a truck to do it in three or four times. You don't have that spin quite quite heavily to go around the hammerhead. Um, I'm, I'm still not, I understand what you're saying, but I'm not sure where you're applying that. I know the you radio. up the hammerhead on the right hand side, okay, yeah. there's a, a segment there that, that goes in, that goes to the right. Uh, yes, they have. show you up here, it'd be a lot easier to guess. I'll get my head out of the way. This section that you've shown here. Yes. That means the truck has to come down and then spin around here. The truck up there and just sort of manipulate that without having to worry about this segment here. So if this line is straight back, basically you have a lot more room to maneuver. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Um, typically... I mean, it looks nice curved, but, you know, I'm saying a straight line that goes to make it a lot easier. Right. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. First, it's uh, typical to be able to have a curve as long as the radius, the mathematical radius works, which in this case it does, uh, to be able to have a turnout that is perpendicular to the road that it is serving. If we were to add more pavement, which can always be done, then you've got a huge amount of impervious surface area that would be used for nothing else other than a turnout. And keeping in mind that because it's a turnout, um, you cannot store anything there. So it's not like we would have the advantage of additional pavement on which you could store or park additional cars or what have you. It has to be maintained, has to be plowed, et cetera, and always kept open. Toward that end, we'd have a huge amount of additional uh, impervious surface pavement, as it were, uh, that would um, basically create you know, more of a, an environmental impact than we propose to do. So it would be about the same as putting in sprinkler system, but that's... Um, well, ironically, you're right. I mean, if the chief decides that you know he wants a greater curve radii, then that's what we'll do.
Does anyone have any more uh, questions around completeness before I open this up to the public? Anything around completeness? Okay, then at this time, um, I am going to open this up, meeting up to the public, and um, the public is reminded that the board is only considering at this time whether or not the application is complete according to the submission requirements for a private access way in our zoning ordinance. Uh, and I should remind everyone that the board has received correspondence from the public on this item as well as from the fire chief. And tonight we do welcome any um, oral comments. And as a reminder, anyone who would like to speak in regards to completeness is asked to please come to the podium. Please provide your name and address for the public record. And you may only speak to completeness of the application. Would anyone like to speak on this item? Would anyone like to speak on this item? Would anyone like to speak towards the completeness of this application? Would you like to speak? No? Okay. No one would? Then I'm going to close the public hearing at this time. Okay. All right then. Um, now, anyone on the board like to speak about completeness on this item? I have a question. You mentioned that there was a deed restriction in, in the plan. Is there an updated plan other than the one we got in our packet? Yeah. Yes, we've addressed everything. Okay. And so that it's on that plan? Well, what are you referring to specifically? So um, you had mentioned that there was a deed restriction limiting development on this lot to just one house. Yes. Well, that's in the actual proposed deeds. That's the legal description. That's not on a plan. Okay. Although there is a note on this plan. I didn't see it. Is it in this packet? I didn't see it in this packet. The legal descriptions? No, the legal descriptions are not in that packet. Okay. What we did was we submit on your plan, you'll note at... Um, Uh, number, note number 12 um, refers to on the plan, which is the plan that you will, the planning board would end up signing. Um, that is restricted uh, as far as any further lot development is concerned. In addition to that, when the deeds are actually created, in other words, when the lots are created and the deed is actually signed and recorded, a part of that deed will actually have the language that refers to the plan with the restriction in that, on that plan, with your signatures on that plan. Could I follow up on that question then? I would, um, I'd, I would note that um, there is, um, for the deed restriction, deeds can be changed. People can change deeds. Mm -hmm. And I do believe the applicants wants to just split this lot. I, I do believe. But down the line in the future, if this land does change hands, somebody could come in and they could change that deed. That's their prerogative. Absolutely. That's why the note is on the plan. But I would like to see something a little bit more concrete, something in the deeds that would say something about a, a third party would have the right to also be notified should this deed be changed. And is there anyone have a little insight? Or Maureen, could you give any, have you experienced anything like a um, deed restriction like that? Well, it's just that a note on the plan. I'll all you need to do is come back and ask the board to change the note. So that's not really a very rigorous restriction. Well, we can certainly put the restriction, a similar restriction, in the, uh, um, the legal language of the deeds. That's not a problem. But as you mentioned prior, it's, it would be much more challenge, and that's no issue. We'll take care of that. Um, but I think from a legal aspect, and I'm not a lawyer, you will find that a, a plan that is recorded that is signed by the planning board would tend to have more weight, I would think, as far as any changes are concerned, than the legal restrictions. Because as you literally noted, anybody can change a deed and then subsequently record it. You can drop language from the deed, you can create a new deed, and you can, you know, one party can do it to another party, and that, and the, the town has nothing to do with that whatsoever. We have no problem in putting in that in there, but I'm not sure that that's gonna hold anywhere near as much weight as a document that's actually signed by members of the town, or the planning board in this case. I do appreciate that explanation, but I do also worry that um, when we're all off the board, when we all roll off years from now, you, somebody can come back before a new board and just say, I'd just like to make a quick change and split these lots. 
I'd like to see something a little bit more concrete. Maybe you could be working with the town planner on, on ideas on either a master plan to show how you would split a lot this size under the regulations in the ordinance or deed restrictions. Sure. No, it's not a problem. We'll be happy to put the deed restrictions in there and spell those out. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Other comments? I guess um, I have a little more confidence in those who might succeed us on the planning board. And if 10 years from now there's a new planning board on which none of us are serving who come to look at the roadway serving this lot, it seems to me there's no way another lot could come in here without a new application for an expanded roadway. So I think that for a third lot to come in here, there, it would have to be before the planning board. Isn't that right, Maureen? Probably. Probably, yes. So if we, um, I totally think we should put something in the, on the plan that says this uh, private access way approval is on the condition that there never be, that there is no additional lot carved from this land. But beyond that, I wouldn't purport to tie the hands of a future planning board or put a third party in there. That seems to me kind of overkill. And should a future planning board come to a different conclusion, to me that's their right to do as long as our intention and our understanding is clear. And I think a fairly straightforward note on the plan would take care of that. So different perspective. Do we need to uh, decide on completeness before we go into this level? Of <coughs> we have one other completeness yeah. question. Um, but maybe it doesn't go to completeness because as, as you're describing your interactions with the fire chief, I'm reading something different both in the fire chief's letter and in the town engineer's letter in terms of what your drawings show and whether or not they establish the sufficiency of the fire truck access. Maybe we take that up afterwards. But unless you have things that we haven't seen yet, and perhaps that's the answer, the documents we have in front of us tell something of a different story as to the satisfaction of the town engineer and the fire chief with the fire situation there. And to me, if I understand the fire chief has said that, well, if I can't get there, let's put in a sprinkler. But to me, that's not much of a solution um, to have a house that Basically, the fire chief saying, hmm, he's not sure if his trucks can get there. Just put a sprinkler in. To me, that doesn't quite do it. I agree. Um, <laughs> and that is, uh, yeah, in all due respect, certainly to the fire chief or any fire chief for that matter. Um, in this case, that's why we've actually got the templates that you have as part of your packet that shows how a vehicle uh, of the size of the, of the fire truck that the chief pointed out to us will be able to negotiate uh, that angle, not the turn so much, but the angle of the road, uh, and not scrape the back of the vehicle. And that's not a minimum scenario. There's actually quite, amount of, uh, quite a room for uh, um, additional area. Um, Maybe I'm not understanding something. properly comments 10 and 11 in the letter that we have, because they seem to, the Amec letter, they seem to indicate the drawings that you have it talks about an exaggeration of the vertical scale such oh. that they don't actually show with any reliability what you're talking about. Or maybe, maybe we're talking about different things here. No, I, I, that's, I understand what you're saying, and that's very easily explained. Typically what happens is because there's no way to be able to show at literal scale the actual angle of that road or any road on an actual plan. I mean, you have a plan that's you know 40 feet long kind of thing to be able to do that. So what happens is we end up condensing, we as engineers um, end up condensing that scale so that you've got what looks like an incredibly steep, uh, almost like a ski slope kind of thing. This is the exaggerated scale that the engineer is talking about. Um, engineers do that all the time. We take a look at that because that scale of that drawing says, for instance, that one inch will equal 40 feet. Well, when you look at that, and that's an exaggerated scale, when you look at that compressed, 
a road that essentially does this number over a course of 100 feet, for instance, when you compress that into an area that's literally this big, um, the road goes like this. It's easy enough to read from an engineering perspective. That's called the exaggerated scale. What, Steve, or what the uh, um, reviewing engineer is referring to is, OK, I understand the exaggerated scale, but it would probably be better uh, on, a minor, on a very small section to be able to stretch that scale out so that at the very beginning of this road, you'll be able to see exactly what that profile is. In other words, this profile as opposed to a profile that looks like that. So what we've done is completed the exaggerated scale for the entire road, and then for the section that he was thinking might be a little bit more challenging for a non-engineer to be able to review, we actually stretched that out so for that particular area, and that's what you see in your packets as far as the, uh, uh, the, fire, the, the fire truck actually making the literal grade that's out there. Do you have a slide about do so we have, do we actually have that or is that? I don't think that was in the happened? packet they got, something we've done since. Oh, okay. But I'm not sure, but comparing the dates, whether this is before or after what the engineer did. Okay. This is, uh, if I can just, um, yeah, and you're absolutely right, this, this, was, this comment was after the, uh, our um, submission. So you do not have this template. January 23rd. So 25th. Right. this we do not have in our package. That's correct. This okay. is the result of the engineer's comment. Um, so what, the, what happens is you've got the exaggerated scale, which takes the entire road length and compresses it into an area that's about four inches long, which is why, given the height of the overall area that we're looking at, at the top of the hill from Clinton Road, which is relatively steep to be sure, it looks hugely steep when you compress it literally into a diagram that's only four inches wide. So what we did was show the template of the extent of the fire engine, how it will actually leave Clinton Road and begin negotiating up that hill. And you can see uh, one of those um, is uh, going up the hill and the other is actually coming down the hill, so you can see the front and back. And the lowest portions of any portion of that fire truck are the grade that it's traveling on. So this is a non-exaggerated so scale. My reading, is that a 3.7 3. 3. inch clearance? Excuse me, is that a ladder truck or a water truck? Or both? Uh, ladder truck. Ladder. So there's no water loading on that truck? There's no couple of thousand gallons on that? Um, I'm not sure how they do that, how they put that the on. The ladder truck has the ladder and a lot of equipment. Okay. So the water truck, if it goes up there, would be lower. But the water fully truck loaded. is also shorter. Sorry. Any questions around the fire chief and the fire truck and a couple of this? Well, it's interesting because I was reviewing the ordinance and yeah, um, I'm the, the, the angle of the road is actually a, a standard by which we judge whether to approve this application or not. It's actually not a, a submission of prop requirement that we judge completeness on. So it's a little confusing. So while it may be a concern for approval, Technically, it's a completeness issue. Um, I look at that as um, I'm looking under private access way standards. And I have this letter from the fire chief we all received, and he said the standard width is 22 feet. And then when I read this, it says the planning board may reduce requirements, some of the requirements. But it also says, in no case shall standards be reduced so that access for any municipal emergency vehicle is prohibited. And so I think that's what we're trying to get at, um, is, it, sure. is this access way, can the truck come in and out at the angle? Um, I do understand that he's saying the grade is okay, but the turnaround, I just heard you say in your introduction that our plan showed it at, um, was it 12 and a half feet? And then you're saying you're gonna make it as large as now 18. Yes. But um, according to the fire chief, the standard is 22. And if that, figure is correct, then that's more impervious surface way, which means um, some of the calculations on the way that the water drains are now not as um, accurate according to the material we've received to date. So we would need more information regarding those changes. Um, and we can certainly supply that to you. Um, keep in mind that in this case, there's only two micro watersheds that we're dealing with. One actually goes to the pond and one goes toward the bottom of the road or down toward Clinton Street. 
uh, as opposed to a subdivision, for instance, where you have micro watersheds throughout it, acres and acres of land that could go anywhere. Um, in this particular case, as far as impervious surface is concerned, there's only two places for that stormwater to go. Uh, and the more recent set of plans that we have that will ostensibly be for your signature eventually, uh, that is reflected on there. But as far as uh, additional impervious surface, it's either going to flow to the pond or it's going to flow to the public system at the bottom of the pond or the bottom of the road. We just don't have those plans in front of us That's correct. to look at. Yep. So when I think about completeness, I'm thinking about what we have received to date. Um, that's true. It's the only physical change that we have made based on the engineer's comments and the town's comments to the plans other than labeling changes um, is the actual width of that turnout. Uh, the road is the same, or the private access way is the same. Uh, the turnout went from, again, 12 and a half feet based on the radius to an 18-foot wide radius. Uh, the um, reviewing engineer had also indicated that the, uh, for what it's worth, that the, uh, uh, the 12 and a half foot radius does work. It just doesn't necessarily work to the extent based on the chief's comments of what he would like to be able to have there. So that's why we expanded that to the 18 feet. But where that is and the depth of it has not changed at all. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I was going to say, if, um, if that's the only change, then I think there are some things missing from, from the plan. For the plan that we have before us um, doesn't show, for example, ma major trees, which we saw on the site walk. Um, it doesn't, I didn't see that it showed the, dir the direction of existing surface water drainage. Um, it didn't show, the building envelope didn't show the nearest fire, fire hydrant. And I believe the engineer said it didn't show um, the um, location and size of existing and proposed sewer, sewer and water mains. So I feel like technically the plan that we received is, is missing a few things. Um, um, the most important is probably this fire stuff, but if you look at the letter of the ordinance, sure. it is missing a few things. Oh, we've reviewed that. Um, we did actually locate the, uh, the fire hydrant, which is on the other plan that you've got for signature. There's one that's immediately adjacent to the entrance, or actually it's one, one property removed, so it's about 30 or 40 feet away. Um, and you're right, that's not on the plan that you have. Uh, as far as the drainage arrows, we've added drainage arrows, but that follows the topography, which you do have. Um, and again, the micro watersheds, the micro watersheds only drain one of two places, either into the pond or down to the culvert at the bottom of the road. But we have added drainage arrows that show relative to topography where that stormwater actually goes. It doesn't change from where it is right now, um, which notwithstanding the fact that we'll certainly show it for you for your signature. But um, please keep in mind that unlike a subdivision, for instance, where we're actually altering the landscape, this is not really an alteration of landscape. While the access way is slightly wider than the driveway, that we're following the pattern of the, or the path of that driveway, uh, which is why we created the lot split the way we did in order to take maximum advantage of the road that's there now. Um, so again, as far as drainage patterns, we're not changing any of them, but we do show the arrows to just show essentially what's out there already. Um, you had another comment, I think it was, um, oh, about the pipe sizes. Yep. Um, and easements, I left that out. <laughs> There are no easements. On there the, is an easement on this. There is a right of water easement. Uh, no, that's an easement that's on a different property. It's our benefit, but it's not on our property. I thought it was on the property. I am not an attorney, but... I don't think so. It's, that easement is it's a water easement that uh, burdens, I believe it's lot 13 off of Oakwood, which is the road that's above us. <laughs> Uh, that is an easement, and actually that easement has not been specifically, has not been specified yet, although it is allowed uh, across lot 13 from Oakwood that benefits our property. Yeah. And while she's looking, do you need an easement for the shared access to the driveway? Yes, that will be in the actual legal descriptions when the deeds are created. Says location and dimensions of any existing easements and copies of existing covenants or deed restrictions. All right, so just location and dimensions of easements. Okay. Right, and none of those exist yet. Gotcha. This is what I did find on your deed. It did say that um, there is a right of water easement, and it is located on lot 13 on Oakwood Road. It says that water line shall traverse in as close proximity as practical to the property lines as said and set forth in this deed. And, Mm -hmm. so that's, I'm not that's, sure exactly then where, is it 
That's an easement burden on lot 13 off of Oakwood. Um, as soon as the easement, or what would be the easement if it's ever exercised, mm -hmm. across that particular lot comes to this property, then the easement stops because you don't have an easement across your own property for your own use. Okay. Thank you. I have yeah. one other thing. I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on this uh, angle of departure. Okay. So the town has a standard for a new angle of departure or an angle of departure on a new road, correct? Um, does the town have that? I mean, no, there is an engine, there's a uniform engineering standard toward that end, yes. Okay, and this is going to be greater than that. That's correct. Correct. So you're, do, is there any kind of waiver that needs to happen, or is this simply happening based on agreement with the fire chief? Um, it's essentially, I, mean, I can't speak for the fire chief, but he would essentially come up with the agreement that he had basically already has as far as the angle is concerned, if I understand your question. There's no real, and correct me if I'm wrong, Maureen, but there's no actual waiver from the board. The board has the right to be able to uh, play with, for lack of a better term, those particular standards as far as, in this case, as far as departure so is we're concerned. we're not waiving the standard? Yes, you are. We are? Yes. yes. So do they need to ask for a waiver? Or? I believe the, the ask is implied. Okay. It, it was in there that that item that I read, that in no case shall the standard be reduced. So we would be doing something that in, is saying that we should not be doing. If we were, based on the information we have received, and granted we haven't received all the information. There's still some drawings out there that we haven't received on this? Um, the the newly labeled drawings, that's correct. Yeah, okay. Anybody else on completeness? <coughs> Questions? Lane? I guess it seems, I, seems to me that there are a number of things that are either missing or as presented are not as you intend them to be. I guess my inclination would be to say that if the applicant would like it to be deemed complete, I think we have enough, I think we have information on all the subjects on which we must make a determination. That determination in my view tonight would be negative. So unless we get that additional information, the application as we have, I think would have to be, in my view, would be denied. But if, on the other hand, I think we have, I think we have material which touches all of the issues on which we must make a decision. Just, so I'm inclined to vote in favor of completeness, although it is with that caveat. Anyone else? Anyone else in regards to completeness? I, I agree with Elaine. Do too. I was actually going to take a different approach. I made a list of all the items that are outstanding on this, and it was, it's a two-page list of items that are incomplete. I know you've addressed some of these items, saying we have worked on that, you will receive that, that will be on the final plan for your signature. I, I, I'd rather have it in front of me than just saying, okay, it will be there, thank you for addressing it, when it is, some of this is, when the fire chief comes out and, and says, this is important, when he writes a memo and says, the standard is 22 feet, they want to originally go with 12 and a half, now you're going with 18, and we're being asked, go ahead and waive that standard, uh, and, and I read something here, it says, in no case shall that standard be waived, and then that impacts more impervious surface, which impacts the flows, which, it, it's just kind of a ripple effect on not having information about what's not there anymore about the turnaround. And I am concerned about the grade. Um, I have, I'd like to hear from our engineers saying that you answered their question about um, the fire safety drawing depicting a drive entrance area with no exaggeration of the vertical scale. They were asking for that. I believe you've said we've done that, but I would like to hear back from our engineers that they are satisfied with that drawing. Those to me are very important pieces about this no, I understand, and that's perfectly acceptable. Um, I would just point out, as far as that's concerned, is that it, that's not something that's acceptable or non-acceptable to any engineer. That's literally the drawing that's behind you, just to show you, or to, or to show a non-engineer what a non-exaggerated scale would actually be. The mathematics behind that are exactly the same. All this does is, uh, when you've got that exaggerated scale, we've literally stretched that out 
from going from Clinton Street all the way to the top of the hill to just that little section from Clinton Street going for the length of the actual fire truck up the hill. So that's more additional information that Steve, that the reviewing engineer had suggested you might want to see just to make it make a little bit more sense. Um, that's completely up to you, but the scale itself is not going to change. Okay, and uh, Victoria, yes. the in Amex letter they do say our comments presented below relate both to design details and town submission requirements and are beyond the completeness level. So I don't know if that suggests that they feel it's complete and ready to dive into the detail. <coughs> I, I also felt there were still other items missing. Um, you don't have your, uh, regarding on-site sewer, you don't have your letter confirming that there's adequate capacity in the public sewer system. That's on our list. Um, you said you would address the town engineer's letter showing the proposed sewer lines and the profile plan and showing the invert elevations on the existing manholes and the pipe sizes. You said you will do that, but we don't have it in front of us. Regarding water, you don't have your readiness to serve letter from Portland Water District. And per, once again, the engineer's letter, you said you will address that pipe size. Once again, I don't have it in front of me to look at that. Regarding important natural features, um, the, the, the engineer said the designer should consult with the town code enforcement officer for setbacks on the on-site body of water prior to any design or construction. I, I haven't heard back from the town code enforcement officer that um, he's received that information. Well, if I may, just on that latter one, there are no setbacks from that. We've self-imposed 10 feet around the pond, but there's no legal requirement or statutory requirement for any setbacks. Um, also, the town engineer noted that the applicant co should coordinate with the main DEP on whether or not the pond is considered a natural resource, which needs to be protected under the Natural Resource Protection Act, or whether a permit by rule will be applicable. Uh, we have that letter from the DEP. De is it in our package right here? No, that was requested after we made the submission. Okay. Uh, but we have that letter, and uh, there is no impact. It is considered a wetland, which means that there's no setback there from. Okay. It is not jurisdictional as far as the DEP is concerned. That's good. I know that'll be there, but once again, we don't have that. Um, also, per the memo from the town planner that said, the code enforcement officer has requested that the area of the pond be calculated and submitted to confirm that jurisdiction. Uh, we don't have that information, but I believe I did hear you mention the area of the pond. Yes. But I don't have that in front of me. Um, note number nine on sheet two should also be updated with any requirements on that body of water. Um, you make some notes in your plan that are reference based on what the code enforcement officer will say. I, it's kind of vague for me. I'd rather say you've had that conversation and that code enforcement officer said the following and we will follow it. Um, regarding surface water drainage, um, the flow lines, uh, Liza mentioned those, uh, they're not on our plan. Um, the designer per the town engineer should also clarify the function of the pond outlet and its down gradient flow path. Um, I also noticed uh, fire hydrants, Liza you picked up on that, it's um, part of our requirements, it's not on the plan. The building envelope, as you mentioned this, the building envelope needs to be labeled. Uh, the proposed building envelope should not include areas where buildings cannot be built. Well, the plan has uh, that. Um, regarding the plan, um, the town engineer wanted some information regarding silt fencing and stabilizing fabric. Uh, he wanted the 12-inch uh, CPP culvert under Clinton Road to be checked to confirm the inverts of the culvert are correct. And um, and we've touched on the private access way standards about the concerns the fire chief has, uh, that you're asking for um, a waiver from, uh, the, you know, and I'd like to hear now what does the fire chief say about that? He was not pleased. Um, that was the understanding I kind of felt. He had a concern when it was 12, and 12 feet and 6 inches when the standard is 22. I'd like to know how he feels now that it's going to be 18. Would he be okay with that waiver? I, I would rather have his input than to say, um, I guess it's okay. I, I really rather have um, his input on that. Um, so those are kind of the items I saw as incomplete. It's quite a few. Some of them are major, some of them are minor. <coughs> we could move on. I don't need to see the hydrant to move on, but some of them are really major items as far as I was concerned. And then when I look at them all together, I really f think the whole plan all together strikes me as incomplete. I thoughts. certainly appreciate your comments. 
Um, and obviously before you uh, have anything that the board would sign, you're going to have all that information before you. Um, what I would submit is that we have actually addressed every single item as far as overall completeness, although we'll certainly leave that to you to decide, but we've addressed all the items. Some of those items need clarification, for instance, labeling. Um, point in fact, for instance, is the, um, uh, the setback lines uh, from the sides and the rear, et cetera. They are actually on the plan. Uh, no, there's not a specific note that says this is a setback line, but it's designated that follows the, uh, um, well, case in point, uh, these are the lines right here, the setback lines, and they are corresponding to the note on the plan that specifically states them. Um, I, I, you know, we can take the note from over here and we can put it right here pointing to the line saying this is a setback line. We have no problem doing that. But for instance, as far as completeness is concerned, we have addressed that. So doing those labeling changes is quite simple. We would never ask a board, this board or any other, to sign anything that it does not meet 100% of your satisfaction. But in our estimation, as far as completeness, as far as addressing every facet of the regulation, I think we have addressed that. And then we'll, we'll label it um, as per suggestions for the town's engineer um, and the fire chief and what have you, certainly. Okay. Anyone else, any comments before we go any further? Victoria's question. <clears throat> if um, we ascertain, if we, if we vote that it's not complete, then everything stops for the moment until they resubmit to satisfy that. If we decided to, that it was complete, but with a lot of detail yet and information yet to be provided, was it the idea that they would proceed on the substance, on the merits of the application tonight? I do believe, yes, we would take what's in front of us right now and decide, do we have enough information to go ahead and proceed? And I, Elaine, did you say that we, your thoughts? Uh, I think the only, the only thing we would do tonight is deem it complete or incomplete. If we deem it complete, then we set it for a public hearing next month. So they would then come back next month, by which time I would hope that all of these other issues would be clarified. So the only thing we would do tonight would be then to set the public hearing for next month. So there's a, we would then get a complete additional packet, which hopefully would include a new letter from the engineer and the fire chief yes. confirming what you've been saying tonight. So at okay. that meeting, is, are you suggesting that we would, if the, if the submission was in fact correct and complete, that we would determine completeness and then in the same meeting continue the application on the merits? If we, if we determine it to be incomplete tonight? No. no. If the next meeting we determine that it was complete, can the, can the hearing, can the application on the merits be considered at the same meeting as its completeness? If, yeah, if, if you determine the application is incomplete this evening, mm -hmm. then next month the first thing you would need to do is make a determination of completeness. And right. you could um, advertise, you could instruct me to advertise a public hearing for next month anyway and the applicant would proceed at his own risk. If you deem it complete tonight, um, you don't get a second shot at completeness next month. True. But they also, if we deem it complete tonight, they would not carry on the application on the merits this evening. You could do that. I'm hearing that there isn't a willingness to do that. Right. You've received <coughs> inquiries from a butters. Whenever you have received inquiries from a butters, you have always taken the the, you've always decided to hold a public hearing. And to hold a public hearing, you would need to table the application tonight to next month in order for us to advertise the public hearing. But in terms of efficiency of process, if they, if we did, said it was not complete this evening, they came back next month, satisfied the completeness standard, and were prepared to present the application on the merits, we could do both next month or no? You could do it. You have. It's, it's not the cleanest way to do it, but you have. But I, I mean, I, I would urge the board to, there have been temptations in the past about a conditional completeness. Hmm. It's really not a good idea. Right. You know, either it's complete, there's a difference between completeness and adequacy. Um, but remember, once you deem something complete, if you don't receive anything in addition from the applicant, your only other choice is to deny the application or to 
live with what you have and approve the application. Anyone else before we take a vote? I'm thinking about what Maureen just said. So, so if we were to be inclined to to uh, call this complete, and for some reason we did not get the supporting documentation that we are expecting, we would have to move ahead on the, on what we on what we have before us, even though this does not reflect. Uh, and I'm not saying that I'm not saying you do this. <laughs> Just making sure I understand all the ins and outs. Um, even though there is documentation out there, we just not have, have not received it yet that supports um, completeness. But we would have to deal with what we have before us yes. if we don't receive that. that. Uh, completeness is a significant step. It, it really, it starts the clock on the board's <coughs> actions. You only have so much additional time. You can only table it so many more times before you're going to have to make a decision. And once you deem it complete, the only other options that are left to you are approve or deny. And you can deny only if standards aren't met. And you, if you don't want to deny it, your only other option is to approve it. Yeah, and um, I guess the standard I'm using is if you look at the private access way standard, so the um, the values on which we are to judge this application, we would be asking ourselves, do we have enough information today to judge this application for these standards? And these standards are um, uh, access way located within a dedicated right of way having a minimum width of 30 feet. Then there are road standards, which I believe this does not meet. Um, then there are um, private access way may only serve one lot. We don't have yet documentation that that's the fact. Um, well, that can only serve one lot. What's that? A private access way is only allowed to serve one lot. Okay. Um, all right. And then um, adequate disposal of sewage um, shall be provided as evidenced by connection to the public sewage system. So we don't have that information yet. Um, and then that a building envelope be depicted wherein the house and accessory buildings will be located on the lot demonstrating conformance with the setback requirements of the district in which it is located and any natural constraints and that the house site will be buffered from a residential property. So those are basically the standards that we're being held to. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to ask ourselves, do we have enough information right now to judge this application on those standards? I, I don't know, I could be <laughs> convinced either way, but that's how, what my thinking process is. <laughs> Lane? I guess I would follow up on Carol's comment. I continue to believe that we do have information to judge all those standards and that they are not met and that the application would be denied. But nonetheless, I'm still inclined to call it complete. For some reason, were that additional information not to come forward, I would have no problem in denying the permit, and then the applicant's only choice is to reapply, refile, repay the filing fee. So there is certainly an, an incentive on the applicant's part not to have to go through that again. A denial on our part, a final determination of denial, is not the end of your opportunity ever to get a public ac a private access we permit. You can reapply with new information, and you'd have to you know, start the time clock all over again and pay new money again. And so there are lots of incentives for you not to do that. So I'm still inclined, if the applicant still wants to start the time clock, and I guess that would be a question for the applicant, given the number of things outstanding, perhaps you would prefer at this point to withdraw and come back and ask for completeness later, because the time clock is a burden on you as well as an obligation on us. But if the applicant wants to proceed with completeness, I'm still inclined to grant it. I appreciate the comment, and uh, you're exactly correct. We will not stand before this board asking you to sign anything that is not 100% to your satisfaction. 
um, and we are a dis disinterested party, but we're certainly working for our client, and our client's best interest is to make sure that everything that we propose relative to the regulation is indeed going to pass. Um, and that's what the reviewing engineer's comments are for. Um, I can tell you for what it's worth, and on the record, but not officially, given that you don't have the updated information, we have addressed every single one of those items um, to the standards of the reviewing engineer, uh, or to the standards of the statute as reviewed by the engineer. Um, but we're not allowed to be able, after this first submission that comes to the town for dissemination to the board and to the reviewing engineer and the fire chief and what have you, once they make their comments, we're not allowed until the next cycle of submission to be able to make these comments. So when we've done all these corrections, for instance, and you don't have to take my word for it by any means, but when we have done them, you would not point in fact that which is behind you just for reference. Um, that's not in your original packet because we didn't have that information until after that was reviewed. Everything that's in those comments has been completed. You just don't have it because we weren't allowed to give it to you. Thank you. Um, and I'm still inclined um, to, I'm looking at this as incomplete. I'm looking at this meeting tonight, not looking at the next meeting in which we could then deny. Uh, to deny, we'd once again need at least four votes, and you don't know if you're really going to get that, so I'd rather just focus on do we have the votes, whether it's complete or incomplete, for tonight. So, any. Can I re ask my question? Because I think the applicant is trying to tell us they think they have all of the information, drawings, data, and whatnot to satisfy each and every member of the board on completeness. They just don't have it, happen to have it tonight. Uh, but I also would imagine that they would like to get on with the consideration of the application on its merits. And why would that not be possible at the next meeting, at the public hearing? Sit down, uh, determine completeness or not. And if, if, if completeness is determined, then just proceed into the uh, application of the... Uh, I, I didn't say that is impossible. No. You have done it. It's, it's, it's un, a little unusual, but you have done it on other applications where you've... Well, no, we, we deny, deny completeness, completeness tonight. Yes. And if, you do, if you denied completeness tonight, the applicant could resubmit for the next meeting, and the first item, the first act you would be asked to do is to determine completeness. And if you instruct me that you want me to advertise a public hearing for that night, I can do that as well. But you would only be able to hold the public hearing if you actually deemed it complete. Right. So you're saying we put off the decision to the next meeting? You have to make a decision tonight. If you deem it incomplete, you're basically allowing it to be completed next week. You're, you're, you the can't next do anything on that. any application until you find it complete. So you just got to keep hitting the completeness until you get it. But I mean, at the next meeting, we could then discuss the completeness followed straight on the marriage, which would seem to me the more sensible way to go. That's just my opinion. Any other thoughts before? Anyone would like to make a motion? Okay. Um, so would, at this time, would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. Motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Winslow Pillsbury for a private access way permit to create a new lot at 10 Clinton Road be deemed complete. All those in favor of completion? Oh, we need a second. Oh, a second, second. sorry. We have a second by Joe. All those in favor of completeness? Uh, we have three. All those opposed? Uh, three for completeness, four opposed to completeness. Okay. So we need another motion. Would anyone like to make a motion? Liza? Um, you got it, yeah. Carolyn. So, uh, oh, to be, so then make a motion for it to be deemed incomplete. Okay. Yes. Um, so, motion for the board to consider: be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Winslow Hillsbury for a private access way permit to create a new lot at 10 Clinton Road be de deemed incomplete. And do I hear a second on that? All those in favor of incomplete? All those opposed? Okay, uh, this will be deemed 
incomplete at this time. All right, uh, Madam Chairman, may we then request that we do indeed have the public hearing? There is, in essence, a uh, there's a time issue um, for the client, for our client. And toward that end, we would like to be able to have the, uh, again, approach the board at the next meeting for the, uh, the completeness and then go through uh, the merit list and then have the public hearing actually scheduled at that point. I'd like thoughts from the board on having a public hearing <coughs> scheduled next month. Okay. I think that makes sense. Okay, Maureen, we yeah. can put that on I for a public you. hearing. Okay. Um, I have to throw this out, a, a site walk. A new site walk. Is anyone interested in a new site walk based on any new drawings or plans? Based on the weather forecast, I'm going to say that's probably <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure that we covered that. We were expecting new plans. So there will be no site walk based on the new plans. Okay. Um, any other comments for the applicant at this time? Oh, yes. No? No. no. Not at that? Okay. All right, then. Um, it okay. has been deemed incomplete, but thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Uh, is it March 19th? March 19th. March 19th, yes. Okay, the next item on our agenda, um, subdivision ordinance overhaul. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council has referred to the planning board a request to overhaul the subdivision ordinance as recommended in the comprehensive plan, section 16-3-6C, amendments to the subdivision ordinance. Maureen, could you bring us up to date on this? is the red line version according to show you every change and then the non red line version is all the uh, changes accepted I would suggest that you throw away the, the non red line version because that's going to be dated almost as soon as I print it because I'm keeping I'm continuing to make additional changes so uh, what you have before you is uh, an ordinance that and, and one more thing I want to make clear that um, I would recommend that that you keep the red line version and send it forward as a good document of how you've made changes, but that you, you recommend that the current ordinance actually be replaced with a new ordinance, because there's been so many changes in terms of moving text around to different places. I think it's going to be very difficult to, um, to be able to get coherent ordinate draft that you can just accept changes from the original ordinance. So I would say that the red line version is really more a reference and that what you would be finally recommending is the accepted changes version. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. So the goals in this ordinance uh, was one, to make it consistent with the state subdivision statute. It hadn't been updated for those reasons in a long time. Uh, there was a lot of changes to improve the organization of the ordinance and I think uh, there have been huge improvements in that area. There have been some routine updates and then there was the, uh, the major subdivision review submission list actually has what I would consider to be a substantive change where you've taken the, the major subdivision appendix, the appendix B, and you've allowed the preliminary plan to be more of a concept plan which saves money in terms of re-engineering the same roads. And then all of the detailed information on engineering for roads and for sewer lines and for stormwater, that would be provided as part of the final review of a major subdivision. So that is more of a substantive change. Um, I also did, uh, since your last discussion, I had looked at the survey requirements, which was something else you recommended. I spoke to um, a registered main surveyor, and he did say that it would, would be easier if you could uh, provide, you would provide the same information for the boundary of the original law, of the original land, but the survey information for the new lots would be more proximate as part of the pre preliminary plan, and then it would be final as part of the final plan. So they would give you approximately, this lot is approximately 15,000 square feet. And it, has and it has 100 feet of frontage, or whatever the minimum maximum frontage. They wouldn't calculate it to the 100th point 
until they get to the final subdivision stage. And that is, has also been captured in the draft in front of you. I did identify a couple of outstanding items, and I'm pleased to report that I have addressed all of them, although apparently the theme for tonight's meeting not in the draft that's in front of you. Uh, so I, I have uh, the updated road designs have been provided by the town engineer uh, today, and I have incorporated it into the draft. The updated road tree list, I received comments from the tree warden today, and I've incorporated that into the draft. I met with the town attorney today, uh, and we've reviewed all of the sections that I've listed here. The subdivision vacation section has been uh, revised a little bit, reworded. Uh, the historical interpretation section has been reworded. Um, the aesthetic standard he has reviewed and confirmed that it, it is, in his opinion, a defensible standard. Uh, the town engineer uh, and the public works director have looked at the stormwater and the utility provisions, and we've made some very minor updating standards. So uh, I feel confident. I've also taken the performance guarantee section and asked the, the town manager to look at it, and he's satisfied with it. So I, I feel confident that I have now a draft that has addressed all of the outstanding issues that I'm aware of. So the performance guarantee section didn't change? Uh, or he's reviewing it? He's reviewed. He, I, I made some changes to it. For example, there were places where I didn't capitalize the P and the G in performance guarantee. Um, there's one place where we inserted the words that you have to submit the, your, your request for a reduction in writing. So the words in writing has been inserted. So the, the draft that I have today has addressed all of these concerns. And uh, the reason I bring that to you is because if you're willing to table this to the March meeting, I have a draft that I, has addressed every single outstanding issue that I'm aware of as of today. Um, if you would like to look at the last final draft before the March 19th meeting, you could also put it on your March workshop agenda. So you'd have it last workshop to look at that before your public hearing on March 19th. You want to have any questions, comments? I'd like to congratulate Maureen on a lot of hard work on this. This is really quite a marathon of, of drafting your part. Really great. It was a team effort. Um, everyone want to put this on uh, the March workshop? Would we like to review it one more time? Some, okay, why don't we plan that then? And if there's no further comments or questions, would anyone like to, oh, Lane, I'm sorry. I, now that I, I was kind of not clear um, what Maureen was trying to do with the survey question, yes. now that I understand it, on page 61, um, I would just suggest a minor change under item two, line eight and nine, final plan showing the number of the lot, final calculations of lot area, property line location and dimensions, and building envelope for each proposed lot. Because there's no, to me that's a more complete description of what we Any other changes? And then, anyone like to make a motion on this item? To table it? We, uh, we, uh, motion. motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the draft ordinance presented, people is a Cape Elizabeth Planning Board tables the draft subdivision ordinance to the March 5th, 2013 workshop for further review and the March 19, 2013 regular planning board meeting at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Second. Joe? All those in favor? And opposed? And it's unanimous. Okay. And the last item is adjournment. All those in, I mean, discuss. Oh, okay. A motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Uh, Henry. And um, all those in favor? Okay. Opposed? And it's unanimous. Thank you very much.